Okay, so the title of my program is Please Remember to Forget. Catchy, right? I'm sure you will remember this because this program, my little section, is all about forgetting. And the larger topic is, you know, where's all this privacy stuff going? Is it going to get into a flood or is it just a ripple? So we'll talk a little bit about this. Um, <clears throat> As I mentioned last year, Europe, the European Union, is very big into privacy issues. And in particular, unlike the United States, they have a very broad-reaching data privacy statute. It's called a directive, but it's effectively a statute. And its idea is to, is to um, protect individuals in the processing of data about them. Uh, and what they focus on is personal data. Now, personal data actually has a very broad definition in Europe. Uh, any information relating to an individual, any individual, any information, whether it relates to personal, private, professional life, it can be a name, it can be a photo, it can be an email address. They don't have social security numbers over there, but if they did, social security numbers, um, medical history, and really anything about them, particularly if it happens to be of a deleterious nature. And why are they concerned about this? A great quotation from the, uh, from the uh, um, uh, memo written in the uh, European Union government with social networking sites cloud computing, location-based services, and smart cards, we leave digital traces with every move we make. Gary just showed you some of your traces, all you in the audience who are just buzzing around the internet while you're supposed to be listening to us. <laughs> so we need a robust set of rules to make sure people's rights to personal data protection is made effective. Uh, <clears throat> I kind of admire the European Union government because they have apparently a sense of humor. This is actually an official government cartoon that's on their data privacy website. So here's, here's a, uh, you know, looks like a student going into the free internet cafe and coming out uh, embarrassed and totally naked because of the information that this person has logged on to the internet doing an internet search. Uh, I, am, I am reminded uh, of going into a library one time uh, a couple of years ago and waiting in line to talk to uh, a, a human being who was a reference librarian. Uh, and there was a young person, looked like a high school student, standing, talking, kind of whispering to the reference librarian, whisper, whisper, and the, li the librarian sort of leans back and say, Mildred, where do we keep the stuff on sex change operations? <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, uh, you know, uh, information about oneself can be uh, disclosed in a number of ways. Uh, you may remember last year we talked about a man named Mario Costeja Gonzalez. Uh, and he asked Google to take down some information about him, that is, take, remove it, as in take down, um, because this deleterious information, this negative information about him, had long since ceased to be accurate, and it was embarrassing. If you did a search on his name, you would come up with this couple of articles about the fact that he had had well, actually, I won't mention it because I don't want to publicize what his problem was, but uh, he, he wanted this taken down. And they said, oh, no, we couldn't do that. So he goes to the government agency in Spain and asks them to make Google take this down. So they enter an order. Google appeals it. It goes all the way to the European Court of Justice, which is on a regional basis, like our United States Supreme Court. It's the highest court in Europe. And the, uh, and the court uh, affirms the order of this, uh, uh, of this uh, Spanish privacy agency and, and makes Google take this down. But more than that, not just fix the problem for 
Senior uh, Costeja Gonzalez, but to actually order Google to set up a whole system to do this for anyone who is subject to the data privacy laws uh, or the, the protections of it. So, so what, the, what they ordered was that Google remove from the list of search results any web page links relating to an individual if such information is irrelevant in relation to the purposes for which the data was collected. And they, they said you have to balance individual rights against, uh, against the sort of collective rights of the public to know things. So they actually, they, Google, have set up this system and there's a request form here that uh, uh, you can, uh, you know, you can go on the, on the website and say, well, I'd like you to take down the, remove the following information. Um, and they have been, this process has been used an enormous amount in the past year. Um, as of this week, uh, over 338,000 requests have been filed with Google in Europe to remove information from 1.2 million URLs. Um, and of those, 42% have actually been remove these, these search results. Now, understand what that means is, it's not whatever the URL is, has been removed from, from the internet, it's, it's that Google's results will not produce that URL. You can maybe still find it some other way if you happen to know it, but you can't search for it. Um, and so, you know, almost 10,000 URLs the listing of them was removed from, from Facebook, 5,200 from YouTube. Um, so, for example, here, here's one that the UK, uh, in the UK, someone said, well, I'd like to have you remove a report about a minor crime that I was involved with. And Google did remove it. And then the newspaper that, the, that had reported it, uh, originally, then, sent, then filed a news report about the removal of the, and Google took that one down too. So the, uh, you know, the long arm of the law extends uh, on, on a continuing basis. Um, so the EU is actually thinking of strengthening this whole process and reaffirming this right to be forgotten. Um, they, they prepared an elaborated uh, directive in 2012 uh, uh, just a few months ago, the Council of, of Justice Ministers in Europe uh, approved it, and um, it'll now go to the EU Parliament uh, and the broader Council for, uh, for further action, and I ex expect that it will be enacted. It, just, it, it, it addresses a number of things, not just right to be forgotten, um, but they, they have uh, reinforced the notion that if an individual no longer wants their personal data processed, uh, and there's no legitimate reason to keep it, then it should be removed. But this proposal recognizes something which was somewhat unclear under the prior codification, is that um, this is all subject to uh, a careful balancing of the right of freedom of expression for newspapers to print articles. And so even though a, a newspaper may be required to take it down or the or Google's research will not find it, um, that has to be taken into account. Uh, here's a statement um, uh, recently from the, the uh, uh, EU Justice Commissioner, uh, sort of like the equivalent of our Attorney General. The right to be forgotten is not an absolute right. There are cases where there's a legitimate reason to keep data in a database Archives in a newspaper are a good example. It's clear that the right to be forgotten cannot amount to a right to rewrite or erase history. Uh, again, a balancing of the public's rights against private rights. So uh, to update you uh, on, on this thing, it, it's not only are there the hundreds of thousands of requests that are, that are going, it now is beginning to impact in the United States because a French uh, agency has ordered Google to take down information, to remove, to delist information from 
its US-based website from Google.com, not just Google.es or Google.fr in Europe, because they've been doing that, but now this French court says, in order for this to be fully effective, this whole right to be forgotten thing, you have to take it down everywhere that you, Google, have a website. And so if you've got Google.com in the US, it's got to come out of that too, because someone in Europe could link to Google.com and do the search, which would otherwise be prohibited uh, in Europe. Um, the, the logic of this is uh, it's an evasion otherwise. Well, Google is, is not taking this lying down. They're going to appeal to the European Court of Justice again. Um, they've said, we're not going to do this. And so we're, you know, we're going to take the heat and we're going to go on appeal because you don't have any jurisdiction. And, and what the French agency says is, well, it's not a question of jurisdiction over the United States. What we're saying is, if you have a website somewhere else and someone in Europe can link to it, then you've got to, to carry the right to be forgotten all the way through those websites. So um, what is the significance of that to us in the United States? Well, if they're compelled to take out information, take, to take down, to remove, to delist information that you would otherwise be able to find in the United States, it will no longer be available to you. Uh, and, and, and this is in order to protect the rights of someone in Europe. In the US, we don't have the right we can't ask Google to take down negative information about us. If there was a copyright violation, we could ask them to do that, but not privacy. But if you're gonna do a search uh, on, on Google.com, there will not be as much information there as there once was. And so it does impact us in the United States. Um, So uh, just to close here, um, I just want to explain how if you have something to hide, you can now take steps and then safely say, the light is green, the web is clear, so if you want to go surfing, dear, I'm delighted, I'm delisted, I'm de-googled. <laughs> I understand the reason why you're curious and just want to pry. You're de nosy, you're de snooping, you're de peeping. You can tell at a glance that the EU has taken a stance. You can hear their court of justice murmuring low. You'll never know. So please be sweet, my chickadee. And when you ask me, I'll say to thee, it's delightful, it's delisting, it's de Debatable, it's deletable, it's defensive, it's deliberate, it's deleted, it's de Google. <laughs> <laughs>